Takatosha. I decree by the Spirit of the Lord, every appointment with death is cancelled. Now, every other testimony shared were to the praise and the glory of God, but I was not released in my spirit. And uh, the moment she started sharing her testimony, the Lord said, That's it. If in your predestination you are supposed to die prematurely, I stand here today. By the mandate of God upon my life, I decree and declare a reversal. That with long life you are satisfied. With long life you are satisfied. With long life you are satisfied. Listen to me, I will tell you this. I don't know what it was until she spoke. You know, Papa Egan went to pray for somebody at the hospital. The guy was about 40. His brother was there, so they went to call Papa Egan. He was sick, hospitalized. So Papa Egan began to pray for him. That God will raise him and heal him and bring him up. So he did not die. His spirit was still retained in his body, but he was not off the sick bed. So Papa Egan went back to God and he keep hearing, words has been spoken. Spiritual law has been set in motion, which at this time, cannot be reversed again. Words has been spoken. Spiritual law has been set in motion which at this time can no longer be reversed. And then the Lord said to Papa again, he has spoken negatively long enough that at this time your prayer can reverse it. But because he stood between the living and the dead, the guy could not die. His spirit was retained in his body but he could not get off. So, God told Papa again, it is better with me than being on earth because he has spoken long enough. And the Lord said to him, he has said that when he is about this time, he wants to die. So after the burial, the brother came up to him. He said, without discussing anything with his brother, thank you, Spirit of the Lord. He said, Ovrahadi ete frekuta la zikate. Mangretos embromba liha brahada kratos hi vali ke limbro paladia zate te proko prakina kata de zete preketusha. For someone under the sound of my voice this morning, I decree and declare time is redeemed for your sake. So the, the, the brother said, Do you know something strange about my brother's death? Is that when we were younger, he has always said, when I am 40, I want to die. When I am 40, I want to die. When I am 40, I don't want to live beyond 40. I just want to die at 40. He has said it long enough that spiritual law was set in motion. You are not sick. Whatever you have said is not yet manifesting. So I can step in. By the mercies of God this morning, every contrary words and voices that has been spoken, over your life today by the blood i declare they are reversed Amen. and they are reversed in your favor Amen. a believer is the only one who can go back to the past and do a correction and stand in the present to determine what is to happen and speak out to the future for what they desire to see your future shall be better Amen. the glory shall be revealed and the fullness of God shall be manifested in your life. Amen. 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 Thank you for that testimony. Hallelujah. Put your hands together for the Lord Jesus. Is that how you celebrate God? You are not celebrating because you don't know what God has done. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Blessed be your name, Lord. Amen. Say, this service is for me. Help me tell three people and say, this is my service. This is my service. You, can, you may sit majestically in the presence of God. Hallelujah. Be seated.
So today we want to share on the winning power. How to win in life. There is different difference between your positioning and your experience. But what God intends is that your experience in life will not be different from your position in Christ. Your experience on earth, God intends that it will not be different from your position in Christ. The book of Revelation chapter, chapter 12, verse 11 and 12. Verse 11 and 12. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. They overcame by the blood and by the word. But it didn't stop there. And they loved not their lives unto the death. It didn't say they didn't love their life unto death. They do not love their life unto the death. That's a definite article there, right? So he's not just talking about any kind of death. He's talking about a particular death in nature. They love not their lives unto death. Then he went on to say that, therefore, based on what? This victory, rejoice ye heavens and everyone that dwell in them. But woe to the inhabitants of the earth. So there is a curse released upon those who dwell on earth. And of the sea. For the devil is come down unto you. Having a great wrath. Because he knoweth. That he hath but a short time. But the beautiful thing. Is that God now provided an escape. Through Jesus Christ. That you can escape the earth. You can escape the world. And dwell in another dimension while you are living and walking on the earth. Is somebody listening to me? Woe to the inhabitants of the earth. Inhabitants of the earth. In other words, there is a woe over the demons. Is somebody listening? There is a woe over the devil. And that's why you and I can say greater is the one that is in us than he that is in the world. Why? Because you are in the world, but you are not of the world. And if you are not of the world, then the world that is upon the earth is not your portion. The woe, the sickness, the tragedy, and all the plague, and all the sicknesses, and all the disease, and every trouble that comes upon the earth, supposed to be partakers of them. And I pray that all your days, you will only see good. Amen. You only see better. Amen. You only see the best. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So God already commanded war upon the, those who dwell on the earth. And you are not supposed to be partakers of this war. Look at 1 John chapter 4, verse 4 to 5. It's a year of God, little children. And have overcome them. Why? Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. For they, he said, they are of the world. Therefore they speak, they of the world. And the world hear them. In other words, listen to me. They speak according to their dimensions. When we talk about, listen, this realm is a dimension. 
And it's only in this dimension that we can see one another. It's only in this dimension that you have flesh. In the dimension from the fourth dimension, this is the third dimension. Every movie is done in 3D and all of that. Do you understand? You look at things from three triangular dimension. But if you cross into the next dimension, which is dimension of faith, beginning with, from the fourth dimension, and the highest dimension is the dimension of wisdom, and that's not what I'm teaching this morning. But once you cross into that dimension, you begin to function in invisibility of the power of God. In this dimension, we can touch. We can feel. In this other dimension, you can see. In other words, my grandfather, my grandma, they are dead. I can't see them. But that does not nullify their existence. They are no longer in this dimension. They are crossed to another dimension. Hallelujah. There is a realm. There is a dimension where you can see God. There is a dimension where you can see. Listen to me. A dimension where you can see the form of God. A dimension where you can see the form of the Holy Ghost. You may not believe that. Does, that the Holy Spirit is present here, does it mean that he's, he's not a visible being in that realm? Are you following me? Yes. He's visible. Listen, Moses walked in a dimension. And as he got into that dimension, God said, listen, you have crossed many dimensions to get here. But if you see what you are not supposed to see in this dimension, you will die naturally. In other words, there are dimensions that you cannot cross and see things except you are dead. That's why Paul said to walk in certain dimensions, you must mortify the deeds of the flesh. In other words, if you are not dead to self, there are dimensions of God you can never see. A little sin here and there will never will limit you to this dimension alone. And once you are limited to this realm, anything happening here can happen to you. Is somebody following me this morning? Now I want you to see something very profound from the word of God this morning. Look at it. They are of the world. See, I'm not of the world. Therefore, they sp speak of what? In other words, they speak of things that they can see in this dimension. And what happens when they speak from this dimension is that the system, the dimension, hear what they say and give to them what they are talking about. So in this dimension, they can talk about cancer. Do you understand? And when you wake up in the morning, that's how to know. When you are in the consciousness of this dimension, you begin to check your body. And little pain in your body, you feel, I hope it's not cancer. Are you following me? When you dwell in this dimension, you are expectant of the things that are in this dimension. Your expectations are based because you can't expect beyond what you can think and reason within you. So what are your expectations? What are they based on? That's why in Colossians chapter, chapter 3, he said, listen, set your mind where? On things that are above. Where? Where Christ is seated. Can you see Christ? But there's a way you set your mind that you see Christ. Listen. Can you imagine? Listen. Pain is pain to you because you are conscious of this dimension. Stephen was taken and was being stoned. Being stoned. Being stoned. And he still was able to pray. For people in that condition. Pray. Do not count it against them. What? You should be saying, yeah. 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 Only me. Ah. Do you understand? He set his mind on things that are above. The Bible says, he said, Behold, I see Jesus standing at the right hand of the Father. Hiya. Because why? They are of this world. They don't understand that Stephen had crossed into another dimension. When you live from that dimension here, if they stone you, you don't feel it. Let me tell you what that stone represents. Not just physical stone alone. That men speak against you and it pains you and demoralizes you is because you are still in this realm. Are
Are you getting what I'm saying? If your life is based on the accolade of people, what they say about you, what they discuss about you, if you're always sniffing around to say, what are they saying about me? You have this realm. You are setting your mind and your affection on things of the world. He says, set your mind on Christ. Set your mind on things that are above. Where what? Christ is seated. On the right, at the right hand of God. Verse 2. Give me verse 2. Verse 2. Set what? Some, guys, some people like to set their affection on their boyfriend and girlfriend. That's where their affection are. Listen, you will be disappointed in that. You can be disappointed in that. Are you following me? He says, set your affection on things above. Not on things on the earth. Next verse. Next verse. Verse 3. For you. Did you see that? The only way is that you are dead. Stephen must be dead. For him not to feel the pain of the stone. You are dead. And where? Your life is hid. Where? In Christ. Hiya. Look at next verse. Verse 4. Where Christ? Ah. Who is what? Who is your life? Paul said, The life that I live now, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. The life that I live now, I live by the faith of the Son of God that gave himself for me. Sin still keep having dominion over you because you are not dead. That aspect of your life that has not seen death is where enemy will creep in. It keeps coming in from that area that you have not experienced death. I pray for you. That door of your life that needs to be permanently shut against the enemy is shut today. He said, when Christ who is your life shall appear, then you also shall appear with him in glory. Next verse. And everyone, mortify therefore. What? Your members, which are upon the earth. To mortify means put them where they belong. Put them where they belong, which are upon the earth. What are your members that are upon the earth? Can I hear the church? What are your members upon the earth? Huh? Uncleanness. Inordinate affection. Evil consequences and covetousness, which is idolatry. Verse 6. For which things sake the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience. This is why the world have woes. This is why there is trouble on the earth. Next verse. In which, in the which ye also walk sometime when ye lived in them. Next verse. But now, say now. now. Tell your neighbor, say now. now. Put it off. You are not telling your neighbors. Let me preach to your neighbors. Say, put it off. Put it off. It's like a cloth you are wearing after we have decorated with the, with the garment of righteousness. When you put on the robe of righteousness, you are now wearing something that is not fitting. Are you getting what I'm saying? Can you imagine somebody wearing a nice suit and then I put a bad on it? You will be absorbed. People will look at you and say, in fact, the first thing that people are thinking about is that Examine When you act in a particular way, people say examine. Do you understand? Let me ask your neighbor. Do people ask you? If because if people are asking you, it means that ah, you need to in the natural they take people to arrow. But here we take people to church. Hallelujah. Put it off. All this. What? Anger. Anger. Uh, anger anger <laughs> praise God <laughs> the guy really demonstrated that he's from Africa yeah, especially Nigeria he said what is it what what is it he said, anger <laughs> is Pastor Koya mean here or in the children's church who can help us <laughs> what's the correct pronunciation Anger. Anger. <laughs> Who is helping us? 
Even those who want to help us are afraid of helping us. <laughs> Nobody wants to be seen to be wrong. And there is no way you can run life without being wrong one time. Sometimes. Hallelujah. The only way you can get corrected in life is to be wrong for all to see. If you hide your error, it stays with you for life. Let's know that you don't know how to... For me, is, is it anger? Or anger? <laughs> Glory to God. Put it off! Put it off. Rot, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication. Listen to me. One of the easiest ways by which you will know your manner of conversation in life are the things that you say in your private moment. Can you imagine a pastor saying, <laughs> we will ask you if you are born again if you do that. <laughs> Don't let me say that in service. <laughs> but I've heard the pastor say it before. <laughs> so I called him and I said, are you sure you are born again? Amen. The pastor said, I like it when it's big. <laughs> Hallelujah. Put off filthy communication. <laughs> it's why you seem to discuss certain things what you desire. Hallelujah. Somebody say, I don't like, I, I, I'll now be looking for what, I know, what is not lost. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> I said, for God has gifted you. What you desire is what you have got. Hallelujah. I said, you got it. He said, yes. I said, is it not now? It, you know, some things you desire in your youthful age becomes your load when you are old. <laughs> Hallelujah. If you're a young man, you won't get married to a lady. And she, she's skinny. She's, you know... The calls and all of that are there. Go check the ma. Go to their house. Hallelujah. Check the mom. It's a picture of the future. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. But when you see at 50, at 60, they are still looking for Galicious. Be rest assured that you have married a Swagalicious person. Huh? Hallelujah. Praise God. My mother-in-law still fry her hair. Do you know fry what it means to fry your hair? And see did it. I said, ah, your husband just died. We, this kind of hair style, no fit for somebody who's husband. He said, ah, ah, make I die. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. All right, whatever your desire, God will grant unto you. You see how people are saying they meant to their desire. How many people want the desires of God and their desire? <laughs> Whichever comes, amen to that. Hallelujah. <laughs> amen. So put, tell your neighbor, put it off. You can't get the best of God except you put certain things off. Because they will be obstructing your sight. Hunger. Malice. Uh, all of that, they affect your thinking. How you see people. Do you know that if I'm angry with you, I can't see the best of God in your life. If I keep malice with you, I can't see good that God even is trying to pass across to me. Bitterness limits the potentials of our destiny. When you understand this, you don't want to be bitter, you don't want to be angry with anybody. It does not matter what anybody has done. Christ, if God be for me. Once your thinking is in line with the word of God, somebody is angry with you and say, I'm not going to get, and then you want, see, listen, every time you talk back to a man, you are missing the point. Behind the scene is the enemy. Once there is confusion in marriage, Satan is present. Once there is confusion in, in a home, Satan is present because he loves the place where there is confusion. I pray for you that confusion is over. Amen. You are already won and the victory already delivered to you. 
First John chapter 5, verse 4. He said, Whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world. Even what? Our faith. He now said, Who is he who had overcome the world? He said, Look at is it? No, give me first John 5. Verse 5 now. For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world, and this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Who is he that overcometh the world? Anyone that believed in Jesus is an overcomer. Listen to me and listen carefully to this. That is your position. When God looks at you, he sees a victor. How do you see yourself is the next question you should ask. Because how God sees you may be different from how you see yourself. And how you see yourself determines how you act and react to things in life. Next verse. This is he that came by water and blood, even Jesus Christ. Not by water only, but by water and the blood. And it is the spirit that bear witness because the spirit is truth. In other words, this is not talking about the natural order of life. For anybody who wants to experience victory in their lives. The foundation for winning in life is rooted in your understanding of one. You need to know this and this is very important. You have victory, number one, through the love of God for you. The first thing I have, the, I'm talking about now, I, I have five I will give to you this morning. The number one is the winning power of, of God's love. You win because of your understanding of the love of God for you. Not your, see listen, what weakens a believer? There is nothing that weakens a believer as much as a believer trying to love God. Did you understand what I'm saying? You cannot be strong in your faith walk if you are trying to love God. You are not supposed to try to love God. How many people here love God? Let me see your hand. And there is no... Let me see your hand. Do you love God? Put down your hand. How many people here are trying to love God? You know, every day you are, you are trying. It's just that some things pull you back and all of that. So you try to pray. How many people try to pray and then after you finish praying, you feel like, wow, I'm good now. Let me see your hand. It happens to you. Yeah? You pray and you feel good now. Ah, I'm on the good page of God now. Can I see your hand again? You, when you pray, you see, you cannot dwell in that realm. You'll be forever weak as a believer. God does not justify you, does not love you because you pray. God does not love you because you give. God's love for you is not because of what you are doing right or you are doing wrong. God loves you in the state where you are right now. It does not matter the state of your life. God loves you that way. God loves you in your mess. God loves you in your sin. God, when, you just, when you went to the house of your boyfriend and you fornicate and you sleep with each other, as you are standing up from that sexual bed, God loves you. That is God's disposition towards you perpetually. The disposition of God to you all the time is the disposition of his love. Do you understand what I'm saying? When you have that understanding, it changes your narration in life. Give me, Roman, give me Romans, Romans chapter 5 and verse 5. Because if you don't understand the foundation of love, you cannot love God. Look at it. And hope maketh not ashamed. Why? Because the love of God is done what? Is, let everybody read. Is done what? I can't hear the church. Is what? Where? By who? You cannot claim to love God except by the Holy Ghost. Christianity is not a mental work. Christianity is a heart work. When I say heart work, I'm saying a, a work by the spirit, not by the flesh. Some people feel that they are Christian when you have not slept with anybody for about one month or two months. That's when they feel they are born again. But God does not even want you to sleep around at all. Fine. 
But then it still does not want you to base your experience with him on the premise of the fact that you have not committed sin. God loves me. Can you say that? If you don't believe that, there is no way you can believe for your forgiveness. Neither can you be free from every addiction. Your freedom from addiction is based on the understanding that God loves you. It is the love of God that breaks the hold of sin over the lives of a man. Don't you see? It is the goodness of God that leads to repentance. And it shows you his goodness because of his love for you. The Bible says, God who is rich in mercy because of his great love wherein he loved us when we were dead in sins and trespasses died in other words not when you are good it was when you are bad that he died in other words the grace of god find better expression when you present your weakness so you, you are not the one that loved god it was because he loved you he gave you the holy ghost then the Holy Ghost begins to rewire, reconfigure you to find a way to express your love back to him. I don't pray because I want God to accept me because I want to feel good. No, I pray because I have a relationship with my father. And my prayer is not for things. My prayer is for the kingdom. When your prayer is based on Baba Darijiwa, Darijiwa, Baba, Koko, Forijiwa, all of that. Listen to me. I ask for forgiveness when I'm wrong. But you know, if you are asking for forgiveness every now and then, something is wrong with your work with God. Are you getting what I'm saying? How many people remember in primary school? Kokoroti, Wakoleda, Oluwalon, Reluleda. Do you understand? The ants that you cannot create is God that created them. When you, somebody will even tell you that we cannot work and not match the ants. Well, the ants did not sin. You kill the ants. That's a sin to God. Those are elementary Bible study. God has given you dominion over every creeping thing. He can't give you dominion. So now, the suya you eat, what sin did he, you, you know, it's just that people don't think. What sin did the cow commit? The fish you are eating, what sin did he commit before you kill it? So now that you are working, you kill and uh, So why did you kill? What is the English word for ken ken? Ants. So jahant. Or biting hands. Take the one I told you now is the correct English word. Though. Biting ants. <laughs> After all, somebody gave you the English. <laughs> Hallelujah. Say the love of God is shed abroad in my heart. First John chapter 3, verse 1 and 2. Write it down. Romans chapter 8, verse 35. He said, Nothing. No, say nothing. nothing. Romans 8, 35. Nothing, nothing. shall separate us. Shall separate us. Ha. I say God's disposition towards you perpetually is the disposition of his love. That's why he can say that. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Nothing. Nothing. Nothing can separate us from the love of God for us. Nothing. Say nothing. 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 So the foundation for winning in life is rooted in your understanding of God's love. That was the secret of David. David. In fact, he has so much understanding about the love of God for him that when God said you have sinned, you have done some things wrong, I need to deal with you. Choose. I'm going to show you three things. Choose one. Send you in next time. To be afflicted by your enemies. All that you fall by this one. No. All that I deal with you by saying no. All of the things that you told me, I don't want. Lord, God, Deal with me by yourself. Deal with me what? By yourself. Because he had an understanding. His anger is for but a moment. But his mercies endure forever. Hallelujah. That takes me to number two. The winning power of mercy. The winning power of God's mercy. Daniel chapter 9 verse 4. He says, and I pray unto the Lord my God and made my confession 
and said, O oh Lord, the great and dreadful God, keeping the covenant and mercy to them that love him and to them that keep his commandments. So we see that God keeps the covenant of mercy with those who have a walk with him. Hallelujah. Those who begin to walk in his word, following his instruction. But look at the mercy of Moses. I mean, David, I enjoy. Isaiah 55, verse 3. Incline your ear and come unto me. Hear, and your soul shall live. And I will make an everlasting covenant with you, even the sure mercies of David. He said, This mercy is sure. And you know, the beautiful thing about the mercy of God is that the mercy you enjoyed yesterday, that you have exhausted, when you enter into another trouble today, it shows you another mercy. So the steadfast love of God never what? Never fail. His mercies never what? Comes to an end. They are what? They are new. Every what? Every morning you wake up, you must wake up with the consciousness of his mercy. When I get up in the morning, thank you for your mercy. Listen, mercy is not what you use when you sin. Mercy is supposed to be your daily experiences. Mercy. Where others are saying there is a casting down, mercy says there is a lifting for you. Where others say there is no way, mercy says there is a way for you. Where others say there is no room, mercy says I'm creating room for you. Do you understand? Where others are saying that there is no breakthrough, mercy says for you there shall be breakthrough. And I declare this year you will experience the mercies of God. For the Lord will arise and do what? And have mercy upon Zion. Why? The time to favor. Listen, there can't be favor without mercy for showing up. And I pray for you this year, you will enjoy the mercy of God. As you enjoy his mercy, you will see the benefit of his favor. In the name of Jesus Christ. Say, believe in amen. amen. The covenant of mercy makes you a commander. Makes you a commander. Give me verse 4. Give me verse 4. Let's see what mercy began to produce in the life of these people. And this will be your order. Amen. Behold, I have given them for a witness to a people. You become a witness to the people. When people look at your life, they say you are a witness that God does not fail in the assignment agenda of man. In other words, when man look at your life, they say, ah, we can see that it's by the mercies of God the things that are happening in your life. You become a mystery. Before, I don't understand. When Bishop Oyedeko used to say, I'm a mystery to many. I mean, listen to me. When God show up in the arena by his mercy in your life, you become a mystery. A mystery. People can't... You, li, listen to me. I pray for you. Men will sit down to study your life. Amen. Today, you become a book many will read. Amen. Do you know there are people who write books, there are, there are, but there are people that they write book about them. Yes, that will be your order. Amen. Behold, I've given him for a witness to a people, a leader and a commander to the people. Next verse. Behold, thou shalt call a nation that thou knowest not. A nation that know you not shall run to thee because of the Lord your God. For the only one of Israel, for he has glorified you. The beauty of the Lord will command the nation to come to you. Ah, am I praying for the right people this morning? I said the glory of God will command people to run to you. The people you know now shall run to you. In that office, people will look at you and be asking you, Gawolo Deno, listen to me. That will be your order. And it will be by the mercies of God. He said, the people you know not, while your others are running around doing marketing, people begin to call you. People begin to call you. We learn that you're working. Come, come. It's you that we want. Why? Because of the mercy. You know what he called that mercy? He said, the sure mercies. This mercy is sure. Is sure. Is sure to you. Is sure to you in your business. Is sure to you in that office. Is sure to you in your career. In the name of Jesus. Thou, O oh Lord, we arise and have mercy on Zion. For the time, the time to favor her has come. Yes, the set time. You are the one to say yes now. Say yes, this is my time. My time and the season of favor. Next verse. Next verse. Seek ye the Lord, why he may be found. 
call upon him while he's there. Next verse. You call on him. You call on him. You call on his mercy. Remember blind Bartimaeus. He saw Jesus. He heard about Jesus passing. Even though he couldn't see. He cried. Jesus. What did he connect him with? Thou son of David. What did he ask for? Mercy. He said, listen, there is a will. You can follow it. But if you follow the pattern of mercy, you can't miss it. Let the weak care forsake his ways. And the unrighteous man is taught. And let him return unto the Lord. For we have what? Mercy upon him. And to our God. For we what? Abund See, listen. In the place of mercy is abundance. Those who receive abundance of grace. And of the gift of righteousness. Shall reign in life. And you can't have abundance of grace. Except you are before the throne of grace. And what do you obtain? You obtain mercy. 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 From this service today, begin to enjoy the mercy of God. Ah, I say begin to enjoy the mercies of God. There's someone that, you know, I've always wanted to meet the person and all of that. I didn't want to go. In fact, when I got there, the person has not. So I said, I said to the pastor, we went. So we slept. In the, I said, let's, let's look for an hotel and just sleep. So we slept in Ife. Woke up the following morning. I saw the person say, the following morning when I woke up, something just pushed me. I said, go to the hotel where they are. I got to the hotel. And the man saw me. I said, told the P. I said, tell him I want to see. There are places you go and you sit down. It's something else. You are looking for your father's asses, but you meet someone else. I don't know whether you understand what I'm saying. The person I met, I can't even mention the name because of social media. Do you understand what I'm saying? You are looking for something, but it's another thing that you are saying there. You are meeting, look, who is who? Is who is who? But you are looking for something else. And based on that, mercy reorganize and readjust things for you. Because if you had seen the person yesterday, there wouldn't have been opportunity for you to meet the person today. What you consider as disappointment today, mercy has a better plan for you. Because of time, I can't dwell more on mercy than that. Number three, the winning power of God's word. First John chapter 2 verse 5. But whosoever keep his word, in him verily is the love of God perfected. You see that? You have the disposition of God towards you is the disposition of law. He now says when you keep his word, you begin to experience the perfection of God's love. Hereby know we that we are in him. When the word of God begins to recalibrate you, begin to change your mentality about God, about things of the spirit. You understand? When you begin to hunger for God, you begin to hunger. It's a disposition that you also have to have towards God. You receive his love and you receive to embrace his love is to embrace his word. When you embrace his word, his word begins to recalibrate you and then now you begin to give expression to the love of God shed abroad in your life towards God. That's when the love of God works in you and you are expressing it in service, in giving, and in prayer, in fellowshipping with brethren. You can't say you love God and you are in your house. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The word of God begins to work in our life. And then become, we become perfected. Another thing about the word of God is found the Holy Spirit pointed this scripture out to me about five days ago. It has not left me. My wife will tell you in the house. It kept ringing, boiling on the inside of me. Luke chapter 1 verse 37. Give me amplified version. You will experience God like no man's business this year. Luke 1 37. Look at it. For with God. Let's read together. One to go. No, stop. You are not reading as a church. Everybody, let's read together. And I know there are great people in this church. Want to go? Nothing is ever impossible. Pause. And read now. Mm -mm. He didn't say no word of God. No word from God. For you to get word from God, you have to be in the word of God. It is the spirit that now conveys to you the word from God. Are you getting me? And he said, no word from God shall be, what? Without power. Or impossible of what? When God speaks everything here. When God speaks. 
everything here. The things that look impossible to you now, one word from God will change the dynamics. And I pray that will be your narration this year. That impossible situation, receive a word from God today. And we, in agreement of faith, we declare a turn around. I said, we declare a turn around. We declare a turn around. No word from God shall be without manifestation. Ah, time. Number four, the winning power of your love for God. The winning power of your love for God. Don't just say, I'm a believer by mouth. We know by your demonstration of your love, by the demonstration of your love. You can't love God and not be a prayerful person. You can't love God and not be a giver. You can't love God and not be serving. No matter how little it is, you'll be serving. You can't love God and not be evangelizing. They come for when we come for deliverance service, many people come. If we come for evangelism, every few people come. Abby? Many cipher. Eh? Plenty. Do we have this number when we come? No. Everybody by nature is a taker. Do you know? Tomba Funwere Loko. If you give a madman O to cultivate, he will do it to his side. Do you understand? That's what Yoruba people say. Abi, how about from where the Lord called But God said, "No, the way of the kingdom is to throw away. There is he that scatter it. You come for evangelism, you are scattering the seed. Yet, what happened to you? You are full. Do you know that even in the old, in the time of old, when they do oxen and they yoke them together, when they are plowing the land, even the oxen that is going to the front is still plowing to himself." Tell your neighbor, it's time to give unto the Lord. First John chapter 3 verse 4, from verse 14. We know that we have passed from death unto life because we love the brethren. He that loveth not his brother abideth in death. He's not talking about the practicality of our love. God loves us. We say we love God, but you can't see God. So God says, my love, the love that you have for me, that you want to show me, demonstrate it through people. Whosoever hated his brother is a murderer. And you know that no murderer had eternal life abiding in him. That's abiding in him. Hereby perceive with the love of God. Because he laid down his life for us. And we. Who wrote the Bible? The Holy Ghost. And we. Do what? No, read it like a, Read it now. We ought to do what? How do you lay down your life? Is he saying that you should go through the cross and die like Christ? No. But he's saying that your evangelization, your giving towards the gospel, your support of the work, your stewardship in the house, your service. You can't be coming to this church more than a year and then you don't belong to any unit. Nobody can account for you. You just come and diffuse like that. And then be stable and serve the Lord. The reason why I'm not serving is because of the way I'm treated. Listen. Serving the Lord will cost you. Just as it cost Jesus. Paul said, death is working in us that life may work in you. In other words, we are pressed on every side persecuted, crushed down, but we are not destroyed. And what happened? He said, we now diffuse the fragrance of Christ. Rather than responding to the situation, we respond with the life of God in us. I don't like the way Sister Susu talk to me. Listen to me. There are moments that you also talk to other people. Even if you don't do that, there are dispositions you carry to, and you show other people that are not in accordance with the word of God. We are all being perfected. And when you think like that, that in the area where I'm weak, another person is strong. Area where I'm strong, another person is weak. Then you understand the harmony of community. We all cannot be men. We all cannot be women. We all cannot be children. We all cannot be babies. Do you understand? 
But at every facet of life, there is an operation of God that is expected of us to demonstrate. Whosoever has this, here we perceive the love of God because he laid down so that we live down our, our lives for brethren. But whosoever had this world's good and see his brother have need and shorted up his bowels of compassion for him, from him, how dwelleth the love of God in him? In other words, if you say you love God, then demonstrate it. But I also know that there are spiritual beggars. Okay, so you are discerning. All right. Number five. The winning power of the blood of Jesus Christ. And I will shut it on this. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 22 to 24. One of the most powerful instruments of power is the blood. But you have come unto Mount Zion and unto the city of the living God. The heavenly Jerusalem to an innumerable company of angels. Next verse. That's why I tell people, order is what commands the move of God. When you know angels are around, you don't even want to walk anyhow in service. Look at it. To the general assembly and to the church of the firstborn, which are written in heaven, and to God, the judge of all, and to who? The spirits of just men made perfect. Next verse. And to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, and to the blood of sprinkling that speaketh better things than the blood of Hebrew. The blood is speaking right now. The problem is that many people are speaking contrary to what the blood is saying. The blood is saying that you are more than conqueror. But you can look at your circumstances and say, there is nothing. Are you following what I'm saying? Do you know that there were three guys and Jesus was using them as an analogy? The first one was given five, another one was given two, another one was given one. Jesus, in giving to them according to the portion of their productivity and performance, he said, he said, to him the heart, to him the heart none, even that which he has shall be taken away from him. Does that not stand sand somehow to you? To him that have not, even that which he has will be taken away from him. To him that have not, even that which he has will be taken away from him. To him that has not, even that which he has shall be taken away from him. If I don't have what, then are you going to be taken? But it's talking about your perception to your life. That you are saying you have nothing. How can a believer wake up in the morning and say, I don't even have any. Somebody just call you and say, what do you have? Even if it's like a joke, tell your friend, I have the blood of Jesus. Don't ever say I don't have. Because you have much more than you think is available in the natural. I have the name of Jesus. And say, yeah, I'm by Sonny. Well, I'm telling you my spiritual reality that commands the natural reality. Uh, oh yeah, let the command natural reality now. Test it. Once you see somebody put a challenge to the word of God, say, call me back in two hours. I'll get back to you. You try it. And you shut the door. I say, Father, I thank you. Because you are surprising me. And the guy wanting to test God in your life will call you back and discover that God has never failed a man before. I'm not talking about you are telling somebody, you are setting yourself up to have that kind of experience. Mm -mm. I say somebody call you, but you have a mindset that I have the blood. I have the name. I, do you understand what I'm saying? I have the Holy Spirit. And somebody now call you and say, ah, oh boy, I have me too. What do you have? I say, ah, what are you talking about? I say, I need money. Do you have? I say, ah, I have money, plenty, plenty. I have the blood of Jesus. I have the name of Jesus. I have the Holy Spirit. What money are you now going to be talking to me about that is greater than all these things? Listen to me. The Bible says spiritual things are foolishness to them that are natural. A natural man cannot understand the things of the spirit because they are foolishness unto him. Pastor, for me, understand this. You don't in the house tell me that there is no food in the house. You can't tell me that. 
Can you tell me there is no food in the house? It's not possible. But there are men who are so carnal. One, when their wife tells them there is no food, and they say, "We don't do that." The first time after we got married, Pastor me walked up to me. There is no food in the house. I grab her by hand. I say, "Come." I open the bonnet of the cabinet. There is food. She understood. I said, "There is food." It was in the morning. She, God wanted to prove to her that there was food. She went out. Somebody met her on the way and said, Ah, Pastor Fumi, Pastor Fumi. Say, ah, I wanted to see Pastor. In fact, there is this money. I carry it everywhere I go. In fact, that maybe one day I will be able to come. In fact, as God we have it today, I carry the money and gave her a, an envelope. This is more than seven years ago of 10,000 era. She branched in the market. She didn't and just removed tight and put it on the left pocket. Went to the market straight and bought the thing. She came into the house. By the time she said, ah, there is food in the house. The righteousness of faith speaketh in this wise. The righteousness of faith has a pattern of speaking. You can be a man. How do you say? People think that it's when you have money that you are the head of the home. You are not the head of the home because you have money. You are the head of the home because you are connected. You are downloading heaven. You are downloading. You are downloading. Do you know how many people who are dead spiritually who have money in their pocket? And they are beating their wives? And they are humiliating people around them? No. We are talking about people who can download them. You have communion with God. That's what makes you a head. You are not a head because you drive a car. You are the head because you know the Christ. The Bible says Christ is the head of the church. So when you are submitted to Christ, your wife is submitted to you. And it is after that order that you begin to enjoy life. Please understand this. You have something. You have the blood. The blood. The blood. When you look at a situation that is not palatable, say, I command in the name of Jesus and by the blood of eternal sacrifice of Christ that this order changes. This wrong pattern changes in my life. In the name of Jesus, I attack you by the blood. Because the blood is speaking. The blood speaks victory. The Bible says, they overcame by what? The blood of the Lamb. When you speak according to the voice of the blood, you are talking about your position. Are you getting what I'm saying? And the word of their testimony, that is talking about the confession of your faith. And they love not their life even unto death. In other words, you are not ashamed of the gospel. How many people are here and they are ashamed of the gospel of Christ? Have you been blessed this morning? Let's rise up on our faith. What's the number one? The winning power of what? The love of God. The second one is the winning power of what? The mercy of God. The third one is what? The winning power of the word of God. The fourth one is what? The winning power of your love for God. And number five is the winning power of the blood of Jesus Christ. Listen to me. Every one of them. I don't know the one you like to apply. Go ahead. Take the one that resonates with your spirit. If you are filled with the word of God, begin to release the ascent of the word. If you don't know what to say, begin to plead the blood on that situation. Are you getting what I'm saying? If you, are, if you are the type that, listen to me, if you are the type that suffer and battle with low self-esteem, you need friends to attest to the fact that you are beautiful before you agree that you are well-dressed. You need to declare upon yourself, I'm filled with the love of God. The love of God is the only thing that can deliver you from low self-esteem. If you always see yourself trying to buy this, trying to buy that, trying to do this so that you can appear as acceptable to people, you need to walk away. Listen to me from that low self-esteem. Somebody spoke to you while you are growing up in life and said you never amount to anything. You were non sonny in primary school and the thing stuck to your brain till now. The blood of Jesus can reach that place. It can purge your conscience of every dead works. Somebody said to you, and the, the only reason why you are running elder scatter is to prove a point to people that say you never make it. That's not how to make it. You make it by resting in the finished work of God. I'd like you to lift up your hand this morning and apply the one that is applicable to your life. In the name of Jesus. Open your mouth. I can't hear the church. And when you have done your declaration, pray in the spirit. Pray in the spirit. Pray in the spirit. Rapatakatosa. Rekekokorokopoliakata. Yada Baliaka Pragnosis is the Brigadia Catosa. 
Ripagadanza kata Zeko poko podia kata Shala kiko prakata Nendo bratos ingledia Rabi sifudia Esozo bagudia Ebrekete Degate dosia gradia Azata tata tata barakata Megobosha karibaya Yanga la balarosa In Jesus' mighty name we pray. There are people here. People spoke. And it became a ceiling over your head. I saw about two or three people in that category. People said things. And has become like. Every time you think about your future. You think about something significant with your life. That word resonates inside of you. Lift up your right hand. Lift up your right hand. Thank you Lord Jesus. Please can you take a step of faith. Come forward. Come forward. There is power in the blood of Jesus. The Bible tells us in the book of Hebrews. It says, How much more shall the blood of Jesus, who through eternal sacrifice was offered, do you know what it will penetrate? It will penetrate your conscience and remove every impediment of sin and things that has been said, words that has been released against your soul. That is now affecting your thinking, your reasoning. Affecting your disposition towards life. And now you relate with people. Today, in the name of Jesus, we command them to be broken. Yeah. By the power of the blood, let them be broken. Yeah. In the name of Jesus, I decree by the grace of God upon my life, that these words of men, in the name of Jesus, by the blood, they are removed. Yeah. I flush them out of your consciousness. So today, break over them, break through them, and begin to do beyond what they have said. It is impossible. In the name of Jesus Christ, begin to walk in the new order of your life. In the name of Jesus, the blood of Jesus penetrates your conscience. Flushed out of your subconsciousness, every negative words, every statement that is not in accordance with your destiny, I decree to that you are reconfigured after the order of your destiny. In the name of Jesus. Let the word of God in the name of Jesus fill your heart. Let it fill your heart. I command in the name of Jesus the eyes that see. I hear my spirit. The eyes that see. Eyes that see. Eyes that see. Eyes that see. Ah! In the name of Jesus, let the blood penetrate every part of your being. In the name of Jesus, remove every voices that is speaking in your subconsciousness. And let the voice of the Spirit of the Lord become louder. Let the voice of the Holy Spirit become louder. In the name of Jesus, I declare in the name of Jesus, the voice of the Lord become louder. Become louder. Become louder. Become louder. Become louder. Become louder than the voice of the enemies. In the name of Jesus Christ. Say, I plead the blood of Jesus. You can go and sit down. Say, I plead the blood of Jesus. I can't hear the church. Say, I plead the blood of Jesus. I plead the blood upon my life. I plead the blood upon my families. I plead the blood upon my marriage. I plead the blood upon my pregnancy. I plead the blood upon my children. I plead the blood of Jesus upon my academics. The blood of Jesus. I can't hear you. I can't hear you. The blood, the blood, the blood upon my finances. The blood upon my mind. The blood, the blood upon my business. The blood upon my career. The blood. The blood upon my destiny. In the name of Jesus, I plead the blood. I plead the blood. Let the blood speak. In the name of Jesus, let the blood speak. In the name of Jesus, let the blood speak. Let every hold of the devil be broken. By the blood, by the blood, by the blood. Shaka balika yato siyakata. Meko paria katos. Yenama na kikata na The blood. I go from glory to glory, from strength to strength. In the name of Jesus. The blood upon my bodies, upon my systems, every of my organs, the blood. I plead the 
blood. I plead the blood. I plead the blood. I plead the blood. I plead the blood. The blood speaks better things concerning my life. The blood speaks longevity. The blood speaks health. The blood speaks financial breakthrough. The blood speaks lights. In the name of Jesus. Over the life of God's people. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Finally, before I make declarations of faith, give me Revelation chapter 6, verse 1 and 2. By the mercies of God, the, your book of remembrance is open today. By the mercies of God, your book of remembrance is open right now. You know, I just have to affirm that because I said your book of remembrance is open today and someone said it's open now. You know, Elizabeth said, eh, eh, anyone that hear your news will glorify God for you. Mary said, henceforth, I'm not futuristic in this thing. It is happening for me right now. See, anyone, he said, people will hear. He said, no. He's not everywhere. He said, now. Now, they are hearing it now. Of the message of God. I will sing. Uh, strike it hard. Let me strike it. Let me hear. Mm-hmm. I will sing. Of the mercies of the Lord forever, I will sing. Of the mercies of the Lord, do you know this song? Can you sing it three times? I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever, I will sing. Of the mercies of the Lord. With my mouth, with my mouth, with my mouth, will I make known, will I make known thy faithfulness, thy faithfulness. Say, with my mouth, with my mouth. of the Lord forever I will sing of the mercies of the Lord alright give me that revelation someone is leaving the service today that nightmare that has been tormenting you from your childhood cease today why because you are going today from conquering to conquer. And I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seal, and I heard as it were noise of thunder, one of the four beasts say, come and see. Opportunity you'll be invited to will happen for you this week. Look at, and you will see. He said, and I saw, and behold, a white horse and he that sat on him had a bow and a crown and was given unto him and he went forth conquering and conquer this will be your testimony listen to me five days ago I mean four days ago the Lord gave me this scripture I'm like what are you saying I just saw it I read it. I left. I went to the toilet. The word does not leave me. I left the house. I traveled. The word didn't leave me. I got to the hotel to lay. You are going from conquering to conquer. From conquering to conquer. I said, is this word for me alone? He said, no. It's for the church. I pray for you. 
whatever has been confronting you before today you go from conquering to conquer never forget this luke chapter 1 verse 37 no word from god shall be without power and without impossibility of manifestation i decree in the name of jesus whatever has been confronting you go and conquer them now every family battle you conquer it now every nightmare you conquer it now every poverty mentality you conquer it now every battle of shame you conquer it now every health problem you conquer it now every marital problem you conquer it now When that guy show up in your dream next time to sleep with you, I decree in the name of Jesus, a sword will appear for you to cut it. I said the sword of the spirit will appear in your hand. And you slaughter the enemy to you. In the name of Jesus. Mm. Satan does not like freedom. Because it's in your liberty, the glory of God is manifested. But I declare today, your freedom, your liberty is delivered to you. Amen. The academic problem becomes a walkover for you. Amen. The carryover that you have written, you won't write it again. Amen. I say you won't write it again. Amen. I say you won't write it again. Amen. The lecturer that stand on your case and say that you won't cross they are removed temporarily until you cross. And the glory of God is manifested in your life. Amen. Thank you, Heavenly Father. You, Come on, celebrate Jesus in this place. Worship Him. Thank you, Spirit of God. Anyone here, your family members are believing God for the fruit of the womb. You are trusting God for the fruit of the womb. Take yours right now. I said take it right now Amen. wherever they are right now let the babies be delivered Amen. and those who are here let the babies be delivered Amen. a new day is upon you Amen. a new season of breakthrough has come Amen. every event of the past trying to make themselves a cycle of life I declare that cycle is broken. Amen. And a new order of glory and honor is inserted. Amen. Proverbs 4, 18. The path of the justice as a shining light that shines brighter. And brighter unto the perfect day. Your path will shine this year. Amen. This is our month of light. You will never walk in darkness. Amen. And the name of the Lord is glorified. Amen. In Jesus mighty name. Amen. Can you... Put your hands together for the Lord Jesus. When you get home, please don't forget, number one, the winning power of God's love. Dwell on it until it sinks into you. And don't forget the winning power of what? Of God's mercy. Number three, the winning power of God's word. The winning power of God, of your love for God, and the winning power of the blood of Jesus. I think you need to listen to the message again. Listen again and again, and then pray with each of them. Look for scriptures that deals with your case, and sit with it, and release the power. Never forget, you won before the journey started. You are not a man trying to win in life. You are a winner establishing your victory on your journey of life. That is your disposition to life. Don't forget, God's disposition to you is his love. Your disposition to God is 
expressing your love back to him because the love is shared abroad in your heart by the Holy Spirit. Now, pack